Please note that this video contains spoilers. X-Men, the official game, thoughts. So, this gets into something that I was kind of pondering. The whole, apparently Jason is just left to die, bit from X2. And I suppose it was decent enough that there were like two versions of him and one wanted to serve his father and the other one, you know, wanted to help the mutants out, you know, realize that that was the best way or whatever. I do kind of, a little bit call BS on, you know, no, it's better this way, I should die. Mm, yeah, I, I don't really think so. I. I guess we don't know exactly why he followed Stryker, and I don't know if he was under some kind of control, or if it was just, you know, father-son kind of thing. I don't know, if there's any way he could just, you know, stop hurting people, I say let him live. Okay, so what exactly was the plan behind, you know, bombing the Brooklyn Bridge? <sighs> And, you know, in the movie it said that Multiple Man was caught robbing six banks. So, what, did he, you know, get away from Nightcrawler after you beat him up? Or, you know, what happened there? I guess he hadn't met Magneto yet, but, you know, so it wasn't like Magneto's plan to blow up the Brooklyn Bridge. But still, what was... What was he trying to do? What was he trying to accomplish with that? I also do think it's kind of strange that apparently the one place Magneto can get adamantium is in a nuclear power plant that he then sends Pyro to blow up. I guess part of the explanation for Pyro's behavior was maybe supposed to be, you know, Bobby is like, what are you doing, or what are you trying to do something to Pyro, and Pyro's response is, I am the god of hellfire. Okay, he's lost his mind, apparently. Fighting the Ice Dragon was cool enough, although, you know, it did kind of show there's not that much you can do with, you know, they only give Iceman three powers apart from, you know, a pot. I don't know, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn all of a sudden. Or... Something. Accent experts help me out here. The, you know, they only do give him the three powers other than the transportation, so, you know. The um, Sabretooth returning, I guess it makes sense that he did survive the first movie, you know. it. That really didn't seem like it should have killed him. One has to wonder what he's been doing all that time, you know, why he didn't show up at all to help Magneto in the second film. I'm not sure exactly where he would have fit in, but I'm sure Magneto would have thought of something for him to do. So I guess we can only theorize. My money is on him having been on an extended vacation, or possibly a timeout, because maybe Magneto was really angry that his bodyguard failed him there at the end of the first movie. I don't know. So I guess the ending of this is supposed to answer why Nightcrawler isn't in the third movie, you know. He decides that he's not really cut out for this kind of, you know, fighting. He's a simple man. A simple, demonic, powered, blue, tail-wielding mutant man. Going to, you know, purgatory was cool enough, but it was kind of ugly, you know. It really didn't look all that good, and I really have to wonder So, I guess, yeah, obviously it was not the real purgatory. It was, you know, Jason projecting something, you know, adult Jason while child Jason helps him out. Still, I do think, you know, if, if they were going for some kind of thing with, you know, adult Jason is using his, you know, projected imagery to upset Kurt, it really didn't seem to upset him so much, you know. I like that you're fighting demons 
uh, in theory I like it, that you're fighting demons that look just like you except black. Of course, in reality, they're really frustrating to fight because, you know, they teleport all over the place and, yeah, the basic game mechanics, you know, I get into that in the review. I suppose that's about what there is to say. I think there were too many Wolverine levels. Obvious why, he's easy to make levels for, just throwing a bunch of, you know, the folks for to fight. You know, Iceman, you have to figure out something for him to freeze and something for him to shoot. And you have to think of a cool place for him to fly around, or at least a place for him to fly around. I do think they've came up with some pretty cool ones, especially flying into the reactor and then back out of it. That was pretty cool, you know. And I don't think there was really a bad Iceman level all in all, you know, although the very first one ex was extremely tacked on. And on Nightcrawler, you also have to be a little more creative because he does need, you know, something to use his acrobatic skills to get around. And it just got silly when he didn't have any real enemies to fight, so you had to fight Sentinels, and you had to fight them by attracting airborne proximity mines that you then had to lure over to the Sentinels and then jump away before, you know, that was just silly. I mean, do it a few times, okay, but it got to be the way you fought enemies in the last several levels of you know, Nightcrawler, you know, and that just, that's too much. But, you know, Wolverine, easy enough. I think the other two had about eight levels each, and I think, I'd also say, you're left wanting more with those two, and you can say, you know, I mean, some will say that that's a good thing, you know, that that's what entertainment's supposed to do, you know, it shouldn't completely, you know, we shouldn't get tired of it, and that's kind of what happens with Wolverine. I got tired of it. It got real repetitive, and it's a pretty short game, so, you know. But yeah, with the other two, others are going to say they should, there should have been more. You know, I personally think it would be cool if there were, like, you know, downloadable extra levels for those two, or you know, something, because they did do pretty good on the game mechanics on those two. Overall, you know, it was fun gameplay with those two, so, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.